All right, so what we have uh, before us here is um, a bit of a loadout on some of the job details in my, my previous life. Um, there's a lot of switching around with different kit and equipment based on um, the task that's expected. Um, certain pieces of equipment may or may not have to be adapted to, but generally speaking, this would be an everyday carry. So what you have in front of you here is um, it's a rig that's made by Tier Tactical, and this particular rig is uh, known as a DABA, so it's a direct action body armor. So the great thing about this particular piece of quit equipment, well, there's lots of great things about it, but it's very rugged, and it's very well built, um, and there's soft body armor built into the structure uh, of the carrier itself. So the typical loadout for myself would be um, three magazines uh, for the carbine up front, and then being right hand dominant, <coughs> I'd have a, a blade on the right hand side, could access it with the left in the event that my, my right was incapacitated for whatever reason, it would just be a little bit more labored. And then up front as well into uh, what's sometimes referred to as the golden triangle, uh, I'd have a, a, a cat, uh, excuse me, a cat tourniquet that I could access with either left or right hand. And then to the left here, have a, a spare pistol magazine and then what you'll see here is two, two different comm suites, so it's a communication suite. Um, one on the left-hand side would be for team comms, and then one on the right-hand side would be for um, command comms. So again, a team comm setup and a attack, tactical command setup. Um, so this would be the setup that I personally run. Again, every, every operator, every assaulter is a little bit different. Uh, this is a, typically the way I would run it. And then on the vest itself, I'd have uh, one beefed up med kit. So this particular med kit would be, as you can tell, it's not easily accessible for the user itself. So this would be a med kit that a buddy of mine uh, would use in the event that I needed uh, some assistance. He could use um, stuff from this kit on me. Um, in the event that I need to help myself out or I want to help out a buddy on my gun belt, I'd have an additional med kit with um, you know, some, some aids to help in you know, some serious bleeds, for example, or another tourniquet, for example, to help um, to cut off any blood flow that was required. So that would be the med setup for that personal rig. And then a couple of pouches for uh, diversionary devices. And then in the back, you see a monkey tail. So dual purpose for this monkey tail, it's either to retain the long gun if we were climbing up ladders or up and over fences or what have you. Just want to strap the, uh, the long gun closer to my side, just to make it a little bit more retainable. Um, as well, uh, say for example, we were in a chopper, whatever, maybe we could f get fixed to something solid inside the chopper, so that's gonna prevent the chances of falling out. All right, so that would be uh, the, the setup for, for the rig itself. So moving down to the gun belt, <coughs> um, the way I have this particular gun belt set up, um, for the, the pistol holster itself, it's a company uh, out of Canada here in Ottawa, um, Gray Fox Strategic. This particular uh, holster, he, they make various uh, different styles of holsters, but this one is the, the Griffin. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. The only thing I would say um, I would like to add to it would be some sort of secondary uh, retention device. So a, a mechanical retention device um, that would be easily manipulated with a thumb uh, would be great because right now the only thing that's retaining this is the actual uh, friction of the, the screws in the structure itself. So great for accessibility but in the event you were to get into a scrap or um, you know an adversary saw the, the chance and opportunity to access your own tool, then there's nothing um, to defend against his, um, or the retention of the tool itself. So great holster, great company. Um, they're a family owned company here in, in Ottawa. They're awesome to work with. They make high quality stuff. Um, that's what I ran with for uh, the last few years of operating. And then the belt itself is a tier tactical belt. Um, it's one of their early additions. It's a little bit more um, flexible than some of the, uh, some of the newer vi versions. So. This belt would get um, fixated into your belt loops of whatever pair of pants you're, you're wearing. And then the rigger's belt itself is heavy duty, but also uh, allows a little bit of flexibility so it moves with your body when you're you know, jumping through vehicles, up and over uh, hard obstacles, etc. And then on the belt itself as well, we talked about the med kit. Um, next to the med kit would be a dump pouch. So easily accessible dump pouch that you could you know, for whatever you needed to um, quick access for, so either empty magazines or shotgun shells, um, 
information maybe you were taken um, off the objective, et cetera. There's just great, great uses for this uh, dump pouch. It's simple, easy to uh, access, easy to keep clean and tidy and uh, keep it out of the way. So when you don't need it, you tuck it out of the way. And then a spare um, carbine magazine. This particular magazine is made by Hexmag. I'm a big fan, very durable, with no, no issues with this magazine. And I've been running it for quite some time. Uh, a couple of pistol magazines. Again, the uh, pistol holster made by Gray Fox uh, Strategic as well. So this would be the gun belt setup um, that I would typically operate in.